Welcome to Moment of Tooth, a monthly series wherein we interview senior dental students and dentists to learn more about their stories and what it takes to be happy and successful in the field of dentistry. Did you see that? <laughs> okay, welcome back. So today we are joined by, as I like to refer to it, the Tamsin McKenzie. <laughs> Uh, she's a final year dental student. She's co-class rep. And then she also used to be the chairperson of the dental house committee prior to me. So Tamsin, welcome. Thank you. It's so nice to be joining you and to be able to speak to all your followers. Yeah, it's you know very nice to have you. I really wanted you as one of the guests, especially since you already did kind of a guest vlog. You know, people have seen you. Uh, they've seen the cat as well, who is kind of running around here. So <laughs> if she there's might, some scuttling. <laughs> yeah, she might come in and out. We'll see what happens. Um, but okay, before we really get into any of the dental school things, I think let's start at the beginning. So tell us a bit about the road to dental school. My road to dental school, if anything, is a bit, it's a bit of a weird situation. I actually find there are very few people who can say, they were at school and they decided, I want to do dentistry, applied for dentistry, got into dentistry, and that's the way it mm. goes. Most of the people I've spoken to, there's some little side path going over, like, whichever way it is, or as I like to refer to them as little lateral canals. Okay. <laughs> so I have quite a few of those. I actually, when I was at school, I wanted to do medicine. That was like, that was my dream. I wanted to be a surgeon. Okay. So I kind of studied at school towards that. And in my matric year, I was like, I'm going to apply for medicine. And I applied everywhere and didn't get in anywhere. So then I was like, well, it's fine. I'll do a BSc and switch over. Tux being the best place because hopefully I can switch in like the middle of first year. Unfortunately, that didn't work for me. I applied first year and then end of first year and didn't get in. And like in my second year, I kind of thought, well, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I should explore some other options. And I kind of woke up one day and was like, you know what I'm going to do? Genius idea. I'm going to apply for dentistry. Okay. Maybe I'll get in and then I can just switch across to medicine because I'm already in the health faculty. Okay, okay. So that was my plan. I didn't actually think it would work. So I applied for dentistry and first day that I started my third year BSc, faculty phoned me and were like, you got into dentistry. I kind of didn't really believe it at first. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, great. We're going to do this. Switched over and my plan was then to, like I said, switch across to medicine. But three weeks in, I was like, actually, this is really cool. Okay. I really like okay. this. And it's probably the best decision I ever made. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, well, <laughs> that's the cat. Don't worry. It's not haunted. Um, okay, so two years BSc, then you get into dentistry. Yes. And you say sort of three weeks in, you decide, like, this is for you. Yes. Um, so did you have to do that initial six months of sort of basically BSc again? Or did you only start once everyone was on medical campus? So what I tried to do was probably a little bit bigger <laughs> than I thought I could have done anyway. But I asked the faculties if I could do the first six months of my BSc for the first six months of that year, mm -hmm. since I was not going to be having to do the first six months of first year dentistry. So I thought I'll just be registered for dentistry, but technically not on campus. So mm. I'd just be doing my BSc. Yeah. However, I needed to get both faculties to sign off on that. BSc faculty was like, off you go, do what you need to do, have fun, whatever. Dentistry faculty was like, absolutely not. Yeah. Under no circumstances <laughs> has anybody been registered for dentistry plus another degree. And I was like, but I'm not going to be doing them at the same time. Yeah. In June, I will stop my BSc and start dentistry. I just don't want to be bored. Mm. And they said, absolutely not. So I took six months off and I au paired. I traveled the world. It was, okay. it was really nice. I mean, I was 20 and mm. having the greatest time ever. It was kind of like half a gap year before dentistry started, which yeah. was pretty nice. So <laughs> Okay, cool. So basically when you then started dentistry, it was essentially sort of six months after everyone else yes. had, had started dentistry. Yes. Okay. So it's funny. I actually remember, um, so the first time I ever spoke to you, uh, it was actually, I think on that first day we were on medical campus and we basically had this like get to know each other <laughs> activity and we were all like slotted into different groups and we, you had to get to know the other people in your group and then you had to introduce them <laughs> a little bit later on. And then they were all sorts of things. Um, but so in that group, Tamsin was in my group and I just remember sitting there thinking, wow, this school seems like she knows what she's doing. <laughs> I do not relate at all. Like I was, I was sitting there, I was scared out of my mind. Um, I was just lost. And like, you just seemed so like calm and put together. So I was like, okay, I'm a stick of this one. Cause, I, cause I think, I think it'll, it'll, it'll work out. 
Um, so, okay, so another thing I wanted to ask you, so, um, you know, you actually have a dentist in the family. Mm. Um, did that impact your decision to do dentistry? Or like how did it influence sort of the way in which you approached dentistry? If anything, it was completely not a thing in my life. I don't know. I think maybe having a dentist in the family just kind of was like, I got to see it every day and was like surrounded by it all the time. My dad's practice is literally at my house. I mean, I can see him seeing his patients from my bedroom. Mm. So it's it's very much in my life at home. It's not mm. like there's a practice far away. Mm. So I think I kind of knew it was there, but I never really considered it. And like, it's not like I went in and helped around the like surgery or anything. I just let my dad do his own thing. And I just was at home doing my stuff at school. Mm. And he always knew I wanted to do medicine. So he'd help me with all my stuff for that and all my applications. And obviously having gone the medical route, he was very, very enthusiastic that I was also going to go that route but I was showing absolutely no interest in dentistry at all I actually in first year said to like a couple of people who asked why I didn't follow in my dad's footsteps my actual words were I don't think I could look at people's teeth all day okay <laughs> <laughs> Cue, you, like seven years yeah, later <laughs> <laughs> so I think if anything it was I still remember sitting on the grass outside the aula on Hatfield campus the day I decided to apply for dentistry and I phoned my dad and I was like I've made up my mind. Mm. I'm applying for dentistry today. And he was like, why? (laughs) Why would you do that? And I mean, he loves his work, but he was like, you've never shown interest. You've had all this opportunity at home. Why? Why now? Mm. And I was like, no, I'm just going to see how it goes. And I must say, I think having eventually got into it. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Chloe. um, After eventually having gotten into it and being like, this is what I want to do. And I'm really happy and I'm really enjoying it. I've now gotten to involve my dad in my studies, which Mm. has been really, really helpful for my studies (laughs) because I can like explain things to him and learn things from him. He can help me with work. And I took home assignments in first year and second year that he could sit and help me with, Mm. which kind of broadened my interest a little Mm. bit more because I got to see where I could go with it as well. He's like, yeah, you're not just looking at this like little ICD-10 code, which in first year and second year, I had no idea what I was doing. He's like, Mm. look at the bigger picture. Like Mm. he can bring an x-ray from his old patients and we can sit there and discuss a whole thing. And it it was really nice to be able to visualize it further and actually Mm. see where I could go with it. So I think not when I started, but now towards the end, it's been really helpful Mm. having a dentist in the family. So Mm. (laughs) Yeah, that's something I was really curious about is having that, there's a bit like that frame of reference, you know. Um, God, that was aggressive. <laughs> okay, mo- momentary interlude with the cat uh, done. Um, okay, but yeah, we were talking about like the, the frame of reference um, because I think that, like, well, at least in my experience, especially during those early years, I never really looked past whatever was yes. the next thing that needed to happen. I, it would be, for instance, an ASCII season and... Like, that was all I was worried about was, like, can I do this thing? (laughs) And I never really put things into perspective. I think only now, um, now that I've spoken to more dentists and I have a better idea of what happens after university, like, I've managed to sort of put everything into perspective. And I think that's helped a lot with, like, stress as well. Because I remember just feeling so overwhelmed at the start because it just felt like this massive thing. (sighs) And there were all these unknowns. Yeah. So... Do you think that has made the experience less stressful, being able to sort of put it into perspective and knowing, or well, I guess getting a better sense of what is really important and what is not important? I think in a way it's nice to have like knowledge of where you're going because the one thing I I always say I really hated my PSC, but the reason I didn't like it was because I didn't know what I was going to do. Like if I'd finished it and I'd applied for a job or whatever, wherever. I didn't know what I was going to do mm. when I got there. I was like, do you want me to sit behind a computer? Am I going to be in a lab? I don't, I have all this knowledge, but no physical skills. Like I don't, don't know what I'm supposed to do. Whereas obviously dentistry, you finish as a profession, you know exactly what you're mm. doing. You fourth year and fifth year, you're already doing everything you're going to be doing once yeah. you leave. But I think having that already from the beginning mm. was a lot easier because it was kind of like, I knew exactly where I was going to end up. It wasn't like, well, mm. maybe next year it'll be more dentistry orientated. I was like, it's a, it's a long road. 
but I know what the finish line looks like. Yeah. And that's where I want to be. So I can kind of just navigate through it to get there. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> Saying it was less stressful is a bit, <laughs> a bit excessive. Dentistry is very stressful. But it was also nice to be able to have, like, to go home and say to my dad, geez, like, seeing my patient today and this is what happened and it was so stressful. It's like it's an outside source, mm. but he relates 100%. Mm. So we can chat about it. He can be like, well, this is maybe how you could get it a little bit easier. It's nice to not have to go to a lecturer or a supervisor or somebody in the university or related to your degree that, like, can navigate you through that. He's like, well, why don't you do this? This is what we do here. It's so, like, so different and so mm. alternative to what you're doing. But yeah. Maybe it'll make things easier. Maybe it'll be less stressful. Mm. So I think in that sense, it was less stressful, but that's, that's only clinical years. So that's, that was latter. Mm. <laughs> the actual theory part of first year, second year, third year, that was, that has its own stresses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So obviously you've been sort of at the theory for a while now <laughs> since you did two years BSc and yes. then the three years of, of preclin for dentistry. Um, so Shanae and I were talking last time a lot about kind of the balance between academics and actually having a life. So, you know, as a veteran student, um, <laughs> what's your kind of take on that? Um, so I, I like to say that I was at an advantage when I started dentistry because I'd had some university experience already. I knew how to study for university. I knew what the university tests like situation or mm. like my first dentistry test wasn't my first university test. Yeah. So I'd already done that whole shebang. Mm. I wasn't really like a first year anymore. So I think I went in a lot more mature in the sense of actual studying, yeah. which made my life easier because I could say I know what I'm capable of. I can look at volume and be like, I can do this in this amount of time. So I'm not going to leave it to two days before, but I know that if I start five days before, I will be very, very relaxed in the mm. two days before, which means I can get ample sleep. I can see my friends. I can go home and have lunch with my family on a Sunday. Yeah. So I kind of always try and balance it that if you do the work the day, you get it. By the time you get to the test is next week, you're like, well, all my notes are done. Mm. So now it's literally just putting my bum on the chair yeah. and actually studying, yeah. which makes it a little bit less stressful because it's not like this manic, oh my gosh, I have all this stuff to do. Mm. So <laughs> I like to think that I managed to kind of say I was aiming for really, really high marks coming in because I was a little bit older and like I'd done this already. So I was like, well, let me see how hard I can study. Mm. And at a, probably around second year, I was like, look, I've already done what I need to do. I've achieved the marks I want to achieve. Yeah. I've done what I need to do. I've proven to myself what I'm capable yeah. of. Now I'm actually going to have a life. Yeah. So I kind of, I always say I'm sacrificing those last like 5%. I'd rather have a good night's sleep and get 75 versus 80. Because mm. it, in the bigger picture, I'm healthier, I'm happier, mm. I'm less stressed. And it's not going to make that much of a difference. Yeah. If you're looking at the last 5% being a difference between like a pass and a fail, obviously it's a yeah. different story. But if you plan it well enough in advance, if you're willing to lose those last, I mean, studying an extra two hours isn't going to help you mm. that much. So especially if, you, if you're good at studying that way, then maybe I, yeah, two hours before a test is not going to yeah. teach me the whole <laughs> yeah. test. So. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. yeah, I think there's definitely sort of a, a, a point of diminishing returns. Um, and I, th I think it's really good for you because, I mean, like you said, you sort of going into dentistry you already had experience yes. with university tests and so you could kind of gauge how much time do you actually need yes. to study i think um like especially when i started i had this problem where there's this thing called parkinson's law which is essentially that work would expand to fill the time available for its yes. completion so in first year i was like okay i'll stop studying once i'm done with the work but like you're never really done with the work there's always something there's always you can more. study a bit more and so i found that especially in first year um, and especially the first um, semester of second year, like all of my time was just studying and yes. working. And it was such a, looking back on it, 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 it was like such a miserable experience. Um, but then I think I, I learned to also become a bit more conscientious about, okay, how much time do I actually need, need for yes. this? And I started experimenting a little bit. And yes, here and there, there were tests where I like showed up <laughs> and I was like, oof, I did not study enough for this. Um, but I think it was like a really useful um, experience to have because after that, I was like, okay, if I'm writing this, I only need this much time. Yes. So, you know, I can afford to go do something else today, to yes. go see friends or just to rest or whatever. And I think in the long run, that's been way more, <laughs> you know, beneficial. 100%. I've especially found now with my later years, I've got friends who like straight off to seeing our patients, if we're writing a test in two days, are in the car on the way home, got to study immediately. Mm. And I've kind of decided I have things to do. I have to go and trim models or I have to go and see lecturers or 
if I have to do that, I would rather do that. I'm not going to study from the minute I get home at three o'clock until 12 that night. I, mm. It's just, it's not who I am. It's never been who I am. If anything, that stresses me more yeah. because I feel like I've just squished all this time and I've done nothing else. So I would rather say, actually, I'm going to stay on campus, do what I need to do, trace whatever Ceph it is or go and trim my model, speak to lecturers, like book patients, get everything sorted, leave an hour later, come back, have dinner, yeah. watch a movie, study for like two hours, watch a series. So I kind of break it up. So it's not just like this looming, well, I have 10 hours left on my yeah. day and I have to study all 10 mm. of them because I, I don't think I would have made it if I did it yeah. that way. It would have driven me absolutely crazy. Mm. Yeah, the way I think about it a lot is that it's a marathon, yes. not a sprint. <laughs> and so obviously for a sprint, you try to go as hard as you yes. can, but you sort of know it's you, you know that it's inherently temporary. Um, but dentistry, I mean, it's such a long thing. We have so many modules. There's so many different aspects mm. to it to cover um, that it's much more like a marathon. And if you want to finish a marathon, you need <laughs> to, to take pace. time to, to breathe. Yes. So. And I must say, especially for like the younger students and all of that as well, Going into your later years, it's not just, oh, I have patients, I have preclinicals where I'm packing teeth or whatever I'm doing in the preclinicals, and then I've got my test. You're seeing actual patients with real problems where you actually have to know what you're doing, be awake enough to focus. If anything goes wrong, be able to like deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. Studying for 10 hours the night before, if you're writing Thursday and now you're studying 10 hours on Tuesday night, and you have patients all day Wednesday, it's a really, really tough day. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you wake up in the morning, you're exhausted already. You have no desire to go see the patient. When mm. you get there, you just want to finish it as soon as possible. Whereas if you've kind of balanced your time and you've started early enough that you can do a little bit, still get good night's sleep, still prepare for your patient the next morning, then you're not as stressed going to the test because everything else has been a little bit less stressful. Yeah. So I find if you go into seeing a patient and you like the only thing on your mind is this test, you can't actually focus on the task yeah. at hand, which I mean, you really need to do. Yeah. So I think, I think that makes a big difference too. Yeah. I think, um, especially with the final years, I've noticed this <laughs> mentality of like, oh, I just want to finish. I just want to finish. Yes. <laughs> um, but recently I've been thinking a lot about like how to enjoy the dental school experience a bit more. And like, say that situation you just explained on Tuesday, you're miserable because you're just studying the yes. whole time on Wednesday, you're miserable because you're not enjoying the clinics because you think, oh, and I it could, goes badly could be and studying for that yes. test. And then you write the test, and it's probably going to be okay at best. And then afterwards, you feel air exactly. about the test. And it's like, so that's three days <laughs> in which you didn't enjoy anything. And then after that... And you repeat it all next week. <laughs> exactly. Like, it, the cycle just starts again. Yes. Um, so I do also advocate for, like, you know, finding that balance. 100%. And also, like, knowing your own limits as Knowing well. when to stop. I've always said, like the last test we just wrote now, I actually, I got to a point where I was like, I probably don't know all that I need to know, but I know enough that I know I'll be safe. Mm. And if I study more now, I'm going to stress myself. I'm going to be tired and I can't go into a test tired. Like if I don't get a proper night's sleep before the test, I may as well not have studied at all. Mm. Because even if the knowledge is in my head, I cannot find it if I'm tired. Mm. So I actually need a good night's sleep and I'll get to a point where I'm like, whatever I haven't done now. It is what it is. I didn't have time. I've done what, like the best I could. I know I've put in a lot of effort. Mm. I know I've studied hard and we'll see how the rest goes. Mm. Whereas, yeah, I know people who will get up then at two in the morning and if you can study that kind of time, then it works for you. But I, I would strongly advise yeah. against it. It doesn't always work in your favor. And the other thing I was thinking about, like in the earlier years, the only sort of metric you have for success is your marks. Yes. Like it's the only thing being measured. But I think especially once you get in the clinical years, suddenly there's this big clinical component to everything. And for me, at least, that really changed my relationship with marks. Because like you said earlier as well, like there's not realistically, there's not much of a difference between 80% and 75%. Exactly. However, you need to work a lot harder <laughs> to go from 75 yes. to 80%. Um, and for me, it's like, well, if I can get to a point where I'm very clinically competent mm -hmm. and I can help the patient, then does it really matter if I know that like very niche thing in yes. the test? You know, I don't think so, because what's been interesting this year is I've been going to write a lot of the tests, but I'm not being assessed on them this year. And so I haven't been really studying before the test because I wanted to basically see how much could I actually remember from all that studying and, yeah. and I noticed that like all those fine details are like gone in the way <laughs> you know but the things that matter yes like that sticks with you and that's those are the things that help you in the clinic so mm. I don't think that extra little bit is going is to make going a difference, to make a difference yes. to my patient 
you know. I must say, I've also, like, I've kind of worked out, I mean, you could ask a lecturer what to study for the test, and it's not really going to get you the answers you want. But if you say to them, look, I'm studying this way, and I'm struggling with this section, but I just, like, the best thing I've found, actually, is that the fifth year tests, especially, are very clinically orientated. Mm. You don't get asked, list 10 points of this. You get a clinical scenario. This is your patient. This is the problem. How would you treat it? Mm. So if when you're in your clinics, you have complicated situations or you're getting something that you kind of know was mentioned in notes somewhere around, but now it's actually applicable to a patient, that's your good time to be like, here I have the situation. I'm not 100% what, like, sure what's going on. I know we've been taught it. It's the first time I'm dealing with it like hands-on. Please, can you help me so that like I understand it better so that when I'm studying, it makes more sense. Mm. Therefore, when you're studying, you're studying to actually treat the patient. So, yes, those little things of name 10 points that can like or whatever positives of this or advantages or disadvantages, they're useful. And they're like you need to know them to a certain oh, extent. Here's the cat. <laughs> <laughs> but in the bigger picture, provided, like you say, you know that you're capable and like confidently treating the patient to mm. the best of your abilities and that, you know, you're not going to do anything that's going to end up negatively affecting mm. the patient you're doing what you need to do at the mm. end of the day so like you know it is it's a bit of a, a tough situation but you kind of have to focus more on that aspect when studying than the little nitty gritties yeah. because that's in your final year anyway majority of the paper like the lecturers always say they want to see at the end of the paper whether you're going to kill the patient or not yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so now we've obviously gone on a bit of a tangent with the clinical years um but i wanted to ask you if you could go back like say five or six years and you could meet yourself again, what a piece of advice would you give for like the road ahead, knowing what you know now? <laughs> knowing what I know now, I probably would have, like, I don't know, I've kind of, every year I've tried to change what I didn't really focus on or didn't really like in the year before that I was doing to myself specifically. Mm -hmm. Like if I found last year, I literally had no time for my friends because I was studying all the time. I tried to implement that better in my next year. So I've kind of, as the years have gone, tried to be like, that younger self was a little bit retarded. We'll try and fix that <laughs> yeah. for this year. But I must say, overall, I would just say that you kind of, balance is very important in your life. And like I said in my last video as well, dentistry is very stressful and it's very long. And having been here for even longer than everybody else, not everybody else, but a lot of people, um, I would like, I don't know, my younger self, I'd just say, you need to take things slowly, visualize the end goal, but don't race towards it because you miss a lot in between. I've spoken to countless people that have said they wish they'd done more at varsity. They wish yeah. they'd tried more, joined more teams, gone to more events, whatever the university had to offer. And I must say, I'm very sad that I didn't get to experience more of that now in the last two years because of the whole pandemic. Yeah. Because in my first year of BSc, my second year of BSc, if there was an opportunity to go to Sari, to go to whatever it was, to go and watch the rugby, go and watch the cricket, go and join the swimming team, whatever it was, I was there. Mm. I tried to get like kind of like a foot in every kind of pot or whatever you call it. Yeah. Not because I was good at any of it, just because it's nice to have the university experience. I mean, you don't need to go out and go clubbing to have fun. Like that's mm. what some people like to do. And most people do that in their first and second and third year and kind of switch over to different uh, kinds yeah. of socializing mm. later in the years. But my favorite things of first year and second year dentistry were this dentistry prize. Mm. It was just such a nice thing to do. And I know so many people who didn't go to them because they didn't want to give up time where they could be studying yeah. or could be honing whatever skills they needed for clinic the next day or whatever it was. And those are very important things. They build bonds with your classmates. They build bonds with your lecturers and supervisors. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the thing that's made my life the easiest fourth year and fifth year is the good relationship I have with the sisters and the doctors. Mm -hmm. I can walk into any ward anywhere in the hospital and the sisters know me by name and they yeah. can joke with me and they can ask me how my boyfriend is and ask me how yeah. everything's going because I talk to them every single day. Yeah. And then when I need help, they're willing to get up and do whatever. If I ask for extra time, if I ask for like to mm. go over a little bit later than the session ends, they will like, they're willing to help you because mm. you've made the effort. They're willing to make the effort in return mm. and it makes your life so much easier. So less of advice to my younger self, but more advice to the younger students is mm. they are the people that can help you the most. Yeah. So utilize it, be friendly to them. They are nice people. They're yeah. willing to help you. And there's so many of them as well. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the thing I, I also said in the past is that, you know, like the people in the hospital are people. Yes. Like no one wakes up in the morning <laughs> thinking, oh, today I'm going to make this student's life as hard as possible. Um, I think a lot of it, a lot of the stress, we kind of just put on ourselves yes. and the way we sort of interpret things. Um, but yeah, like for me as well, like knowing, having a good relationship with the sisters and the doctors and everything, 
And your classmates. It's important yeah. to have a good relationship with your classmates. Yeah, and it, it just means that, like, overall, you walk into any ward or the lab or anything, and you mm. know that, like, people are on your side. And it's like, if you're struggling with something, you know, you can just go ask someone. Yes. And they will help you. They won't shut you down because you've, you know, taken the time to sort of be friendly with them. Yes. Have a good relationship. Okay, so I asked this to Sinead last time as well. In terms of dentistry, kind of looking at everything as a whole, but also like the day-to-day -day things. Yes. What are some things that you like and that you don't like? It's a very big question when it comes yeah. to the hospital. <laughs> I must say, like, the longer you be there, like, the longer you be there, the longer you are there, <laughs> the more you get to see the floors, if that makes sense. I mean, you become part of the furniture. Yeah, yeah. You get to see, you also get more integrated with the lecturers yeah. and the wards and everything, and you start to see where things have a little bit of a crack or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I must say, in my final year, the thing that has irked me the most is our lack of materials in the hospital mm. i am trying so hard to do so many things and it's very difficult when you get there and you have a plan to do one thing and there's no material for the yeah. one thing and that's not the hospital i mean that's a government situation i mean they've been asking for materials forever but mm. it does very heavily impact what you can and can't do and it impacts how you yeah. can and can't learn so you can't do certain things if there aren't materials and that's it makes it very difficult because you want to leave having done as much as you can yeah then the other thing that you only really come to like no in final year is crown and bridge which i wish we had started earlier mm. my one big thing is that it would have been so much nicer if we could have started that in fourth year mm. purely because it is kind of where majority of aesthetic dentistry is, is at the moment yeah 90 percent of your private dentists are doing mostly crowns and like a couple root canals here and there so it is a very big aspect of dentistry but we don't get very much experience in it mm. we started too late which means that we end up being very stressed in that module the entire our final year because we only have so little time to actually do it mm. but we also only have to do very little of it so i almost feel like i don't know if i'm going to be confident like confident or comfortable after i finish final year just in that little aspect and it's something i really enjoy doing mm. i love crowded bridge i haven't even had that much of it and i love it but i feel like i will definitely go and do courses after i finish just because i want to have done more of it mm. before i'm actually comfortable i don't think that having done five crowns in final year I'm going to be happy. There will be some students who are, that's good enough for them. And maybe that's not even the route they want to go. But I think for me, it would have made a very big difference to a lot of the final years if we'd started it earlier. And I think yeah. this has been said from other final years and years before, like the ones that I've spoken to, they've had similar thoughts about it. Mm. So that's one thing that I'm a little, little sad about because it is a nice thing to do. Yeah. But overall, I must say, I've been very happy at the hospital. I've, <laughs> I have my days where I complain a lot, but it doesn't really have to do with the hospital itself it's like the tests are hard and the days are long and mm. we have like the clinical sessions run into each other and you don't have time for lunch and like yeah. there are like little things but it's not every day mm. so like i always say if i've had a bad day i'm like it's a bad day it's not a bad year it's not a bad degree it's just today is not a bad yeah. day sometimes you <laughs> yeah. have 10 of them in a row and <laughs> it does happen yeah. and sometimes you're really not in a good mood but overall i must say i've met the most amazing people i've met like I'm good friends with the lecturers. I've got good friends in my year. I've made really, really nice memories. And like, I feel like I have a relationship where I can go back at any point and I'm friends with the staff there and I've learned a lot from it. And overall, I think you learn what you need to learn to go out. I've spoken to the comm mm. serves now and the like, people who did comm serve the year before that are now practicing in like private practices. And they all said they learned what they needed to learn. They're yeah. all very comfortable dentists. They don't feel like there was any gaps in their knowledge, mm. which is, it's nice to know. Yeah. It's nice to know that, you're struggling while you're there, but it is going to be worth it. Mm. So I think if anything, it's more, I know they're in the process of like changing the curriculum, which is not going to affect students now for a few years, but it will in a few years to come. And I think that's probably my biggest issue with the whole thing at the moment is how the syllabus is laid out. At the yeah. moment. So if that changes, it's going to make a big impact mm. to the students that are there at the moment. Yeah. What I've noticed is sort of like from other dental students that I've seen online and everything in general, it seems like with the rate at which modern dentistry sort of progresses, the things we do in dental school, you know, we learn the bulk of dentistry, yes. but the priorities are yeah, yeah, they're sort of weighed differently in dental school versus in private yes. practice. So, for instance, with Crown and Bridge, mm -hmm. um, where because it takes so long to sort of change a curriculum and change a syllabus, it's as if the the education you get in dental school is 
always going to be a behind, few years yes. behind what is actually happening mm. in private practice. Hence, you know, sort of that adjustment yes. curve at the start I've heard from like uh, colleagues that have since finished mm. and now gone into private. Um, so I feel like that's kind of, I, th- I think a problem that will, <laughs> will to some extent um, Never o- go away. always be yes. there. It'll just take on different shapes mm. as modern dentistry changes as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think from what I've heard as well, it gives you it gives you the bulk of what you need to know. But it's like that that extra extra little bit. Um, you only really learn that once you get there. <laughs> but in a way, I think um, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about this the other day. I think one thing that dentistry is very good at is making you feel like you don't know anything <laughs> and yes. you just have to start from scratch and figure Every it out. Every time. <laughs> but, you, but you will figure it out yes. because you've done it so many times mm. prior to that. Yep. So I do think that is one sort of, I guess, life skill mm. that dentistry does a good job of like teaching people. I, I completely agree. And I must say, in terms of that, like in terms of the feeling like you don't know anything, I've noticed a lot that like, I don't know, the one thing I've struggled with, especially now in my final years, it's like the supervisors and the doctors expect you to be very responsible because I mean, you're going out now, you're going to be a dentist in six months. You need to have a certain level of responsibility. And they like, they expect you to have this level of responsibility, but they don't necessarily always give it to you. Yeah. So it's a bit of a like fine line that I found that I've had to walk where I don't always need to ask for help and I don't always want to ask for help. And sometimes... You know, I actually have things going on. I have a wedding and I can't go to my clinic today. And I've organized with my patient. I've booked another day. Mm. And there's this huge thing about why you can't do that because you need a sick note if you're going to miss it. And it's like, you're expecting me to be responsible and treat this like a job, but you won't let me treat it like a job. Mm. You're still treating me like a first year, Mm. but you keep telling me I'm a postgrad student and that you won't spoon feed me or give me anything. But when I try and organize my life and plan it like a job... You kind of get told, no, 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 but like, that's not how things work around here. You're a student, you need to do X, Y, and Z, which I found very hard to deal with because like I say, being a little bit older, I've got friends that are getting married and things that are going on. And sometimes I need to take literally one clinic off on a Friday once every five months. Mm. And to try and get leave for that is very difficult. Mm. And I think they do need to take into account, especially like, I understand that we're students that are going to like try and shirk the system and miss things where they can. And they're lazy people and they're always going to be, you're Mm. never going to get rid of that. But I feel like they should always take into consideration be like, this is a student who never misses anything, is always on time for things, does what she needs to do, mm. whatever it is. So if you're asking for one day of leave, you're not going to fail the year. And I think it needs to be put into your hands. And they're always sitting there saying, well, if you don't meet quota, it's your fault. But they don't even give you the opportunity to do that. Like mm. you, you should be able to say, if I miss one clinic, I don't meet quota. I know it's my fault. Mm. I know that I should have gone or I should have made a plan for that. But they don't give you that leeway which yeah. i would i would quite like the responsibility to say you keep telling me my degrees in my hands and meeting my quotas in my hands and finishing what i need to finish is in my hands but when i try and take it into my hands it doesn't <laughs> yeah. happen <laughs> yeah this is, this is a pattern i've noticed with like some other final years as well um is that you you are expected to have like a high level of independence yes. and yet you don't get a high level of flexibility <laughs> yes. in how you do couldn't things. have said it better <laughs> um and so i do find that like sometimes i feel like um, because of the rigidity of everything, it's almost like the the whole is getting punished for yes. like you know the few bad actions that individual students have have done mm. in the past. Um, so I do find the students <laughs> sort of you know, as, but especially like among the final year group, I think as everyone kind of just gets ready to mm. kind of start living their own life a bit more, they do sort of run into that wall <laughs> at the hospital. I have found I have hit it quite a yeah. lot. <laughs> Uh, which I think is something that a lot of people look forward to yes. now that you know, I'm going I must out say, of dental school. Yes. I've been saying to a lot of people that I'm looking forward to ComServe and to being in like, whether I stay in government or go into private, whatever I do, I'm really looking forward to doing my own thing. Mm. I love working at the hospital. It's like, I always say like my patients ask if I like being there and I'm like, it's so nice. We have everything. Mm. Like the chances of me having half the things I have now when I go into ComServe, the chances of me even having an x-ray machine. It doesn't matter where you go, like you can have it, you may not. So it's really nice to have the facilities we have. They are actually incredible facilities. We are very lucky. So I'm like, in a way, I like I've considered applying for ComServe at the hospital because Mm. I was like, we have all the stuff here. But at the same time, I don't want to go back to the hospital because I have this like fear that I'm going to be treated like a student when I'm there. And the thing I'm looking forward to the most next year is being able to make my own decisions. Be like, this is the situation I've been giving. This is like the clinical presentation. This is what I'm going to do. And I know I can do it. And then just 
doing it. Mm. Not having to tell anybody, get permission from anybody or have to like pause midway to show anybody anything. I know I'm capable. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. And if I don't know what I'm doing, I will phone for help. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm looking forward to the most is just having some freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I don't know if you remember back in first year, we had to give him this, um, assignment that was basically like, who am I and why am I studying the industry? <laughs> um, and I was, I was looking at that the other day, like what I wrote back in first year. Um, and I saw one of the things I note I noted was like, when I went to go and shadow different dentists, I noticed that a lot of them had like the sense of confidence about them. Um, and then I, uh, now that we're sort of in dental school and we're in the clinical years, I, I, I really um, understand where that confidence yes. comes from um, because you do have to like take a lot of things into your own hands. Mm. Like if you don't book a patient, like that's no, your problem. Yeah, no so one's going to help <laughs> exactly. you, you know, um, but they will get mad at you, <laughs> you know. Um, and I think, you know, in general, it puts you in a lot of tough situations where like I said earlier as well, you really don't know what you're doing. But over time, as you sort of face the situation again and again and again, you start learning yes. what you, you know, you can do this. And then you also start figuring out what you're really good at, what you're maybe not so good at. Um, and then you can either, you know, focus on what you're not so good at mm. to try and level that up or really leverage the things that you're, that you're really good at and figure out, okay, how can I go even further? Um, so yeah, I do think like even though I'm not like at the end of final year, I've even noticed <laughs> myself, there are certain things where it's like, I know I can do this. Like yes. I, I really don't need any supervision <laughs> anymore at that point. I'm very comfortable. Um, yes. So yeah. Um, but I do think, I do think it's nice once you start getting that, getting that feeling. Mm. Cause at least for me, like a lot of dental school was just, can I do this? <laughs> like I genuinely don't know if I can do yeah. this, but Especially now when it's, you're doing it for the first yeah, time. But now it's gotten to a point where it's like, actually, not only can I do this, I think I can do this really well. Yes. So um, I do think like once you sort of get, <laughs> I, I, like, even though I, I know it's like a frustrating feeling, I do think it's like a very healthy sign. Yes. Once you start feeling like feeling that. Feeling like you're kind of ready ready to leave. Yeah. And like, I always say a lot of people are like, so how's final year? And I'm like, just don't even ask. <laughs> <laughs> final year is rough. Like having been here for so long, I was like, I think I'm just, I'm just so ready to get out. But yeah. like. I do like being there, but it is, it's taking its toll on me. Final year is taking its toll on me. I try every day to be positive and there's always something in every day to be positive about. So it makes it a little bit easier, yeah. but like, it just feels like, I mean, I keep saying to everyone, I'm counting down the weeks and I have 17 weeks left. <laughs> I'm super excited, but like, it's quite nice to have the comfortable environment for the last little bit while we're there, because if you do need help, you could still get to yeah. learn. However, I do feel like by the time you get to this point, you've had a year and a half of clinicals, you already know what you like, you already know what you're good at, which means you kind of have an idea of where you want to go already in yeah. life, which is also very, very nice because you've done enough of everything that you're like, actually, I really don't like that. We're just not going to do that in private, yeah. <laughs> which is also, it's a really nice thing for me to have. I'm like, I kind of, I know in my heart that next year I'm probably just going to be doing mostly extractions, but I'm hoping to be in a place where I can do other things. So it'll, it'll, we'll see how it goes. And yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that though. <laughs> okay. So now with all this talk of, you know, finishing final year and sort of going out into the world, what does the road ahead look like for you? Like in your head, what do the next few years look like? Kind of a rough, rough outline. <laughs> so the next few years for me are kind of like, I don't know. It's a little bit of a confusing thing because obviously I never intended to do dentistry. I never like saw myself going this way. However, now it's been five years. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> we're very much yeah. in this. Um, obviously, next year, we apply, like, we'll apply for ComServe now in August, and we see how that goes from there. My plan, and we'll see how that goes, is to apply for Georgian ComServe, as, I don't know, I'm sure was mentioned in the other visit, like, video, because how it runs there, like, I would like to be in George, so I don't have to do long distance again next year. It's, if anything, that's been an extra toll I've had to deal with this year, and in final year. I mean, a lot of people are in long distance relationships, but I feel like this year I've needed a little bit more, I don't know, emotional support because finally it is busy and it's rough and mm. having him not here has been not yeah. so nice. So my plan is to try and do ComServe there. It's also a really, really nice hospital. It's a very functioning hospital. They have x-rays, so that's amazing. Mm. <laughs> but obviously we see how that goes and maybe I get placed there. Maybe I don't. And if I don't, we make a plan from there. But my plan after that is kind of, I want to work with my dad, even if it's just for a year, just so I can, like, I don't want to learn, like live there permanently or work there permanently. And I don't really have intentions to take over the practice. Um, 
but I do want to work there for a little bit because he is, he's actually, he's a phenomenal dentist and I, I look up to him a lot. I've always, since I started dentistry, I mean, I like, I've helped a lot more at home now and I can help in the practice and I see the work my dad does and it's, it's really, it's phenomenal. And I mean, <laughs> I can say that because of his daughter, but also because it truly is amazing. I've yeah. spoken to his patients. I've spoken to other dentists. I've spoken to the people that he refers to, the orthodontists, the prosthodontists, and he really does amazing work. And that's the level I aspire to be at. I mm. aspire to be a dentist as good as he is, that people will literally fly from other places in the world to come and have their teeth done there. That's that's the kind of dentistry I want to do. Mm. So I'm hoping that if I learn from him for a little bit there, then I don't know, maybe I'll get to that level. Mm. And then my plan is to kind of do a little bit of postgrad studying here and there. I've Applied for a postgrad diploma in, author- in endodontics for next year. So we'll see how that goes if I get into that and all of that. But my plan is to kind of do that and then I'll probably do another one after that. I kind of want to go the aesthetic route. Okay. So I see UWC offers a course in aesthetic dentistry and it's like it's a six month course. So I kind of want to see where that is. Yeah. I Like I was saying earlier, I really, really like the crown and bridge aspect. So I want to try and go further with that and yeah. do a little bit more of that. I thought when I started dentistry that I would go the surgery route because yeah. I initially wanted to be a doctor to start off with. So I thought, well, I'll look at Perio and I'll look at MaxFac. And like, as I've grown as a dental student and now that I'm towards the end, like my perceptions changed completely. And I'm like, I don't really want to deal with the blood and guts and gore. Yeah. The delicate work and it, like, it's so like it's so satisfying to do it, especially if you can do it well and you know you can do it well. It like seeing this like start result and the end result and seeing how happy it makes the patients. And it's, it's really phenomenal. And that's the kind of route I want to go. I want to go help people like people and patients where when they come in, they have this like, you know, they're a little bit sad about whatever it is and they want to change this. And when they leave, they are so satisfied Mm -hmm. because every time I've had a patient say, Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Or like, thank you. I really appreciate what you've done. I'm so happy. Like it warms my heart so much. I love helping my patients. And Mm -hmm. there's like a lot to be said for like, there's a lot you can do to help a patient where they can't necessarily see the change. But I feel like when they can actually notice the change, mm. whether it's taking pain away or changing their smile, when they can see or feel the difference, mm. they automatically are a bit more grateful mm. and that like flows into you. And that's kind of what I want to do. Mm. So I don't know where I'm going to end up. I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll see. Mm. <laughs> Maybe how Ron and I open a practice together. Maybe we take over a practice together. I don't know. It's mm. nice. It's a bit of a weird thing for us because I have a dentist in the family. He has an orthodontist in the family. We're both going to be dentists. So we've got this, like all these options. I always say to like a lot of the sisters and the supervisors have asked and I've said, we actually have like all these really nice problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just dying over there. (laughs) So I'm I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to end up, but I have a vague idea of what I want to be doing when I get there. Yeah, no, the, the problem of optionality is not the worst. Yeah. <laughs> the worst one to Too have. many possibilities. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it, it sounds really exciting. Mm. Um, so what you were saying earlier where, you know, you kind of aspire to be like your dad, a dentist like your dad. Um, so for me, at least over the past few years, you have sort of been my image of greatness, essentially. Um, <laughs> like, uh, and I mean, this came from that first day we spoke in first year, uh, when I just got that sense that like, she, she, she's both a bit different. Like she, <laughs> she has an idea of like where she's going. Um, and like, and like throughout the years, I've sort of used you as like, th- this is the, this is the gold standard. So like, if I can match Tamsin, <laughs> then I, I'm probably in a good place in life. Um, and so, I mean, you can just use a recent example. So. Tam's an absolute champion. <laughs> she finished all her prosthetic work, like in the first few months of this year, like the whole year's work in like just a few months, even like the cases that were supposed to go to the lab. She went and sat and did herself. <laughs> did she hate herself for doing that? Maybe in the moment, but right now <laughs> she's it. sitting with like, so worth it. <laughs> you know, we're like, she doesn't have to worry about prosto for the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, and after hearing that, I was like, oh, I need to shape up. And so <laughs> I've also been spending a bunch of time in the lab because sort of my barometer for success has always been, to a large extent, what is Tamsin doing? <laughs> um, and so personally, I'm very excited to just kind of see where you go. Um, I think um, there's this phrase, I can't remember where I read it or where I heard it, but it's essentially, it was this phrase, um, like an um, it was like in a story and the one character said to the other, um, 
you seem like you're built for more. <laughs> um, and so I think like, especially with you, and that's also really, really what I wanted to have you as a guest here is I feel like you are one of those dentists that's like the growth is just going to go exponential. <laughs> I hope so. so <laughs> but I appreciate you yeah. saying, so I must say like, I've always tried to, I think I was also going in a little bit older. Like I had that, like everyone in my class was a little bit younger than me. And I was like, I've always wanted to work hard and do amazing things. And, like be an example for younger people. And I mean, it was helpful that like a few people in my year were younger than me as well, because I can also help them. And I think that's why I ran for class rep. That's why I ran for chair. That's why I was on the committee. I want to be able to be a person that people can look up to mm. and say, if she can do it, I can do it. And like, it's not impossible. And I'm always wanting to admit when things are hard and when things are difficult and that things are not always a straight line. Yeah. I may look like I hold things together <laughs> very well, but I mean, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it behind the scenes. And like, I was called in by Prof Sykes the other day who wanted to call me in to say, like, I'm really proud of you for finishing your dentures in five months. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm actually really lucky because I have all this free time now. And she looked at me and she said, lucky. That's not lucky. You were here every day until six for like three months in a row. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I was. I went home in the dark for three months in a row. Yeah. But the hard work has paid off. And like, it was very stressful then, but it is so worth it now. And mm. I'm really happy I put in the time and the effort and I really hope that other people can see that and be like, mm. they don't have to work that hard, but they know it's not impossible and it is doable and you can reach those goals and mm. hopefully it inspires some other people to <laughs> yeah. try and break my record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it, what's so nice about, what's been really nice about working with you is, so usually, you know, a way to sort of gauge where you are in dentistry and in life is, you know, you compare yourself to the people around you. Yes. Um, and you've, it was like, if all of us were here, then like you were one of the outliers that were always kind of going above and beyond. <laughs> and that really changed my frame of reference for how much I can actually do or how good yes. I can do something. Um, and I think, uh, so, so I distinctly remember last year when we were both uh, at the start of fourth year, um, I really struggled. So for me, like my strength has always been in theory. Um, I've always been really good with sort of more abstract concepts and, and memorizing things. And like, that's always where my strength has been, but actually physically doing the work, I, I didn't have like a lot of talent at the start. So for me to get good, it just required like a lot of grinding and sitting there like late into yes. the afternoon, every single preclin. I remember uh, back in third year when we were still doing preclinical work, like everyone else had finished preclin. And I was still sitting there with Dr. Lombard. It was just me and him in the lab. Cause I, and I told him like this at the start of the year, I was like, I'm probably gonna be slow, but I need to get good. I need to get as much experience as I can. Um, and so I remember at the start of you know, fourth year when we started seeing and treating our own patients, like you reach that like level of confidence and competence so quickly. <laughs> and I was like, cause in my mind I had given myself like, almost the entire year to figure to things out. Yes. And you reached that point where I wanted to be so quickly, <laughs> where I was like, no, okay, I need to shorten <laughs> the timeline. Um, and I really like started going hard at like figuring out how can I do this better? How can I do this better? So just having that frame of reference has been like really influential for me. Um, and I hope that's really I inspiring so for other students <laughs> as well. Um, I am going to try and break your record next year. I'm just saying. <laughs> I expect video evidence when you do. <laughs> Um, and then uh, just the, the last little thing I wanted to end on. So, um, you mentioned Hadman earlier, um, good friend of mine, her boyfriend obviously could have figured that out <laughs> from the context or if you've seen <laughs> both of their vlogs, um, generally can connect the dots. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask like, how, what's sort of your, I guess, what is your relationship with your relationship and dentistry? Because there's always sort of, I've noticed two, um, I guess, schools of thought when it comes to should you date someone in your profession 100%. or not. 100%. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to get your your take on that before we end things off. I must say, when I started dentistry, I always said I would never date somebody, even in the medical faculty. I was like, nope, I want to date somebody who is completely separate to what I'm doing because... What are we going to talk about all day? Yeah. I was like, if we're literally doing the same thing all the time, we have nothing to talk about. Like, I want to learn things from a person. I want to be with a person who can teach me stuff and like is completely different to what I'm doing. I want to like be able to say, well, I did this today. And they can say, well, they did this and I have to ask about it because I don't understand yeah. it. 
However, you know, <laughs> that didn't work out so yeah, often. Well and it's actually the best thing ever because we are completely different people, mm. but we have this thing in common, which means that after a long day, I can phone him and I can tell him how my day went and what was happening. And he genuinely understands. Mm. He's been through it, but he's also currently doing it. And because we're not the same year, we have very different things going on. So we have the, we're doing the same things as in like we have dentistry in common and we can talk about it, which is really nice. Mm. And having been at the same hospital as well, I can come home after a long day and talk about lecturers and talk about tests and talk about like environments. And he has a mental image of every person and everything because he's been there. He's yeah. done that, which is he knows the context. It's a really nice thing to have. But also he can teach me all the stuff about he's what he's doing now. Yeah. He can phone me for help and I can phone him for help. And we have that in common, which is re it's a really nice base. It's mm. a nice base to know that you can literally go home and have a conversation about what you have, like what you did in your day and what happened. Yeah. And the person genuinely is invested and understands and can help you and like change whatever you need to change and fix whatever you need to fix and figure it out. Mm. But on the other spectrum, because we have completely different interests, we never run out of things to talk about. We mm. can talk about dentistry all afternoon and then switch over to him teaching me about politics or me talking. I mean, everybody knows I talk all day. So <laughs> <laughs> fortunately, we're not going to run out of things yeah. to talk about. But it's actually been so nice having a major part of our life in common. Mm but being very different people because we have both sides to talk about. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> I think it's been the emotional support I needed as yeah. well as what he needed when mm. he was fourth year, final year. Mm. We were there for each other through like tests and stuff because we genuinely understand. It's mm. one thing to say to a person, shame, I understand what you're going through versus genuinely being like, I've been there mm. <laughs> and it's nice to be able to help each other. So mm. I must say, <laughs> Yeah, younger younger me didn't know what she was talking about when she was like, no, date somebody <laughs> yeah. not in medical field. This is the best decision, but also it is, yeah. yeah. It's also because of who he is. So yeah. yeah, I think the reason I bring it up is because, the, you know, dentistry is one of those things where, one, everyone else in dentistry, you already have something in common with them. Yes. And two, it, like it's an emotionally, um, it's an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> Basically, you, the people that you surround yourself with, you see them at the lowest of lows yes. and you see them at the highest of highs. Um, and so, you know, sort of in, uh, you know, in that environment, it, it does lead to like really close connections with mm. people. Um, and so I remember, uh, last year, what I really appreciated, uh, about with my clinical partner is that when we went home, we didn't talk about dentistry because yes. we had all these other things. And so when I was kind of thinking about who I want the next clinical partner to be, I also kind of went with that metric of, you know, I want someone that's like interested in dentistry yes. and like they sort of know what they're doing. But at the same time, when we leave the hospital, we can just leave be work people. Behind. We don't have to be dental students the whole time mm. in in each other's company. And then that's also something I've really appreciated with my friendship with Herman as well. Is that like when we're not at the hospital, we can talk about a bunch of yes. other different things. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to get your two cents on that. I must say, yeah. we've never been the people that say, well, once, like, once we leave work, we leave work at work. We, we tend to talk about dentistry a lot. Mm. Um, I mean, you can't not when you both involve very heavily in it. We spend, I mean, when he was still here, obviously now it's a bit different, but when he was still here, we were spending every single day together of like basically the entire year. It's hard not to talk about yeah. what you're doing in your day every day when yeah, you're with yeah. that person all day. I mean, it's different if you see a friend every now and then to say, we're not going to talk dentistry, mm. but when you're practically living with the person, it's a bit difficult for it not to come up, yeah. but we've never really had the conversation where it's been like, let's not talk about dentistry. Mm. We kind of just talk about how was your day? How was my day? And then things branch from there. And then we talk about everything else that's going on mm. in the world and what we are interested in and like it branches from there. So mm. it's been quite interesting because I know he's got friends and I've got friends where we will say, like once we've left campus, dentistry stays behind. Mm. And like, if we go out for dinner, we specifically don't want to talk about it. But I must say, I think also because we both come from families with it, it's not abnormal for yeah. us. For me to go home on a weekend and sit with my parents and my dad's discussing patients over dinner is 100% normal. Yeah. That's what happens. My brothers get up and leave because they don't know what's going on and they don't care. But I've always grown up with it. So for him to come and do it, it's just as normal. And if I'm not talking dentistry with him at my house, he's talking it with my dad. Mm. So there's always something in the same yeah. when we go back to his house. His dad will ask about it. His mom's involved as well. So we just have very dentally orientated families. Yeah. So I don't think it's abnormal for us to spend a lot of time talking about it because we're both, like, both very invested in what we do. We're yeah. enjoying what we do and we have a lot of goals and plans for where we want to go with it. So yeah. <laughs> I think it makes a, makes a bit of a difference, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's super interesting. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, but, I, you know, I think we've been at it for a while now. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I knew the risks going into a conversation with you. Yeah. Um, but thank you, Tamsin, for all your pleasure. insight, for all your knowledge. 
uh, <laughs> for just being you for just being so inspiring at the hospital and just being like the foundation for a lot of other students as well um but thank you for taking the time thank and, you for having um, me you know, do you want to end things off with the with the signature line? <laughs> no, I think, that, I think that's your job. We'll leave that to the pro. Okay. Well, <laughs> as always, good luck out there. Like they started tearing at the back. So these ones aesthetically look better, but those ones work better. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know what the better option was at this point. Like, should I have gone with aesthetics or function? <laughs> Me doing dentistry. <laughs> Make it look nice. Or just Literally. Do you want it to, to work, work or do you want it to be pretty? Yeah. <laughs>